In this tutorial, we will discuss the investigations to diagnose bleeding in early pregnancy. Now, first of all, you have to decide is the patient hemodynamically stable or not. If she is unstable and there is surgical abdomen which is tender and rigid, then you have to perform an emergency laparoscopy or laparotomy. In this situation, what is the diagnosis? Why did you perform laparotomy or laparoscopy without a diagnosis? No, I have a diagnosis. The diagnosis is surgical abdomen. This is an emergency. The patient is hemodynamically unstable and the abdomen is tender and rigid. So this is a diagnosis that we have. It is called a surgical abdomen. And you have to intervene in order to be able to save the patient. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable, and you do not have a surgical abdomen, but you have excessive vaginal bleeding, and you have clinical findings of miscarriage or abortion. So this means that the patient is hemodynamically unstable because of the vaginal bleeding. And in this case, you perform an emergency uterine curettage. Those patients who come hemodynamically unstable, which means they are in hypovolemic shock, you have to stop the bleeding. So the first thing you decide is this bleeding intraperitoneal or this bleeding is external vaginal bleeding. If it is intraperitoneal bleeding, you have to go for laparotomy or laparoscopy. If it is vaginal bleeding, then you have to go for uterine curettage. So, and the patient of course is hemodynamically stable. So what do we do? We perform a TVS, transvaginal sonography. According to the transvaginal sonography, either this is a normal intertrime pregnancy, and we discuss this in the obstetric ultrasound chapter, or this is a failing intrauterine pregnancy, which is a miscarriage, and also we discussed this previously. In all cases, I did see an intrauterine pregnancy. So, you do TVS. You see an intrauterine pregnancy. You decide either this is a normal intrauterine pregnancy, fetal heart is positive, I have a sac, I have a yolk sac, I have a fetal pole, according to the gestational age, of course. Or it is a failing intrauterine pregnancy. I have no fetal heart sounds, although I can see a fetal pole. Or a case of failing intrauterine pregnancy, if I cannot see a fetal pole and the uh, gestational sac is more than uh, two centimeters. Another thing is that you may diagnose ectopic pregnancy. This means that you see fetal heart outside the uterus, a sac with fetal heart outside the, the uterus. So this is a diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Or you see a molar gestation. In all these situations, you have done a TVS and you have a finding. So you treat according to the finding. The problem is here. There is no evidence for intrauterine pregnancy with TVS and the TVS is non-conclusive. I cannot diagnose an ectopic pregnancy either. Neither can I see a molar gestation. So this means I need something else to diagnose where is and the condition of the pregnancy. So what I will do, I'll obtain an initial beta HCG quantitative level. The, the level may be above the discriminatory zone, which means that I should see something. And if the level is above 1,500 milliunits per milliliter, why am I not seeing pregnancy in or out? This may be because this is a failed intrauterine pregnancy, or it's a complete miscarriage, or it's an ectopic pregnancy and you cannot see it outside the uterus, or it's a multifetal gestation. So we have a high level from two small sacs. After some time, they will appear. The other possibility is that the initial level is below the discriminatory zone. So it is normal that I'm not seeing anything by uh, TVS. And in this condition, I have two possibilities. This is an intrauterine pregnancy or extrauterine pregnancy. I'm not sure. I'm sure she's pregnant, but I'm not sure where is the pregnancy, in or outside the uterus. That's why it's called pregnancy of unknown location. And even if it's intrauterine pregnancy, I'm not sure if it's healthy or unhealthy. I don't know. So how can I reach a diagnosis? It's very simple. You just obtain another beta HCG after 48 hours. If the level rises by 100%, this cannot occur except if the pregnancy is intrauterine. If the level is more than 63%, not 100%, it's not doubling, but it increased by a rate more than 63%. Statistically, in most cases, this is an intrauterine pregnancy. So what I do is that I repeat the TVS afterwards maybe after 10 days, after one week, 
since the patient is hemodynamically stable and I don't have any problems, so I will just repeat the TVS. If the decline is more than 50%, this is a failing pregnancy. Failing pregnancy can be intrauterine or extrauterine. And I have to assure that the pregnancy ended. So I will do a urine pregnancy test after 14 days. If it's negative, then the pregnancy has resolved. If it's still positive, this means that the pregnancy did not resolve completely. So I will repeat the HCG after another 48 hours or I will perform another TVS. Now, if the rise is less than 63% or the decline is less than 50%, so this means I'm not, I'm not sure, I, I cannot assure the patient that it's intrauterine, I cannot conclude that it's a failing pregnancy. So what do I do? Repeat the HCG after another 48 hours or perform a second TVS. If after 48 hours, it declines more than 50%, then I will do the urine pregnancy test after 14 days to assure that the pregnancy has resolved. If it's still positive, I will do it again. If it's still positive, I'll do it so long it's declining more than 50%, I have a very good possibility or chance that this will resolve. So I keep on following up. If the TVS shows it's an ectopic, then I treat as ectopic. If again the rise or the decline is non conclusive it's not declining to make me feel comfortable that this pregnancy will resolve, and it's not rising to make me feel comfortable that this pregnancy is in it right. When the TVS is non conclusive, I will go to more diagnostic approaches which are more or less invasive. Then you can perform one of three things either diagnostic laparoscopy, or if the ultrasound shows free fluid. In Douglas pouch, you can perform synthesis, or you can perform a uterine curettage and await the histopathology. The histopathology may not be available till one or two weeks. During these one or two weeks, you are following up the, the HCG and you are keeping the patient under your close care because she may be anectopic and she may be disturbed at any time. So this is the hierarchy to reach a diagnosis in a case of early pregnancy abnormality bleeding or pain in early pregnancy and you need to reach a diagnosis it's pretty simple unless the ultrasound does not give you a clear cut or a conclusive diagnosis at this condition you have to follow up with the hcg hcg is doubling every 48 hours then it's okay if it's not doubling well is it declining more than 50 percent which is a failing pregnancy or is it declining but less than 50% and not rising by a satisfactory amount. In this condition, you are in a dilemma. And this dilemma, either you solve it by following the patient up or you solve it by performing diagnostic laparoscopy or synthesis or uterine curettage, depending on the condition uh, on the clinical finding of the patient. If there is no fluid in Douglas pouch, then why should you do synthesis? If I don't have good evidence that she may be ectopic, I would go for a uterine curettage rather than laparoscopy. But if I have clinically some motion tenderness of the cervix, I have something clinical which makes me suspicious a little bit that she's ectopic, I will go for diagnostic laparoscopy. So this is the algorithm in page 584. Thank you.